and I look top, and I so why not? Welcome back to another video and uh, today I'm going to be talking to you all about David Beckham. Uh, I don't know if you've watched the documentary on Netflix, uh, it's a four part documentary kind of going through David Beckham's life. Uh, it was phenomenal, it was absolutely fantastic. Now what I do have to say is I am not a football fan. Uh, I used to follow Celtic um, around about that sort of time, so in the, the, the late 90s and the early 2000s, I was a Celtic fan, loosely, <laughs> and I would have watched the Scotland games, but to call myself a, a football fan, that is a bit of a reach, because I wasn't really a football fan, I don't, I don't really love the game, uh, I find it fairly boring, if I'm being completely honest, but with that being said... I had seen other people speaking about the David Beckham documentary and they'd said some quite good things about it. And I can respect what the guy has done uh, from, like, from a business standpoint and actually like, you know, making something of his life. So I can really respect that side of things. And that, I think, is what drew me towards it and what made me want to watch it. And I'm so glad I did. Warning, <laughs> if you've not watched it already, man, this might come with a few spoilers, all right? So uh, if you've not watched it already, you might want to turn this video off Go and watch that documentary and then come back and watch this and see if the lessons that I learned line up with things that you may take from the from watching the documentary. But if you have already seen it or you don't really care about watching it and you just want to learn whatever lessons I'm going to talk about, then stay tuned because I'm going to get cracked on. Okay, so first things first. First lesson I kind of want to talk about is number one is hard work pays off. Now, throughout the documentary, there's two or three times where people comment on David Beckham being super talented or being gifted. And I'm not saying he's not a talented guy, of course he is. However, if you watch how the documentary plays out, and this has been something that I've noticed with a lot of like really, really high level professional athletes. People will say, oh, they're talented, they're gifted, they, you know, they've been born with a skill. And I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not the case. I don't know enough about it, man. I don't know. But what I will say is that massively, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It massively underplays the work that these people have put in to honing their craft, to getting good at what they do. And if you watch David Beckham, if you watch what happened throughout the course of his life, from a very early age, his dad had him running about playing with the football because his dad's dream, his dad's dream was to have a kid that played for Man United because his dad was fanatical about Man United. He wasn't going to play for them, so he wanted a, a son that played for Man United. So from a very, very early age, he had a ball at David Beckham's feet and he was putting him in all different kind of scenarios, throwing the ball up in the air and getting to control it on the way down. If it wasn't good enough, he was making him do it again. Then he was making him hit free kicks and hit passes and just do loads and loads of different stuff. And even at the games, his dad was super, super critical of him, saying he wasn't, he wasn't doing well enough, he had to try harder. And David Beckham had so much respect, or maybe even at some points he mentioned he had a bit of a fear for his dad, that he didn't want to disappoint him because he knew he was going to get roasted. So he would try harder, he would try harder and we would keep putting the practice in and he would keep on working. And that even became evident when he went to, 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 to Man United, he got dropped from the team at some point, and then he, you know, he went in and he actually practised even harder. And he was showing them the, the management, no, 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 man, you made a mistake, man. He practised and he practised and because he didn't want to be in that position. All right, so <clears throat> if you want to achieve anything in life, you have to work hard at it. Nothing's going to get given to you. You have to put in the work. So yes, of course, he's a phenomenal player, but if he wasn't putting in the hard work, he wasn't going to get uh, selected for the teams. He wasn't going to get put in that, that position that he was in without putting in the hard work, all right? So hard work absolutely pays off and we can't just pass things off as, oh, he's just talented because that, that is really, really unfair in my opinion to the hard work and dedication that, that David Beckham and whatever other uh, incredible sports star has put into honing their skills to, to get them into the positions that they're in, all right? Um, okay, so number two with that kind of in mind is that great things take sacrifice. So if you watch, you know, when he, when he speaks about his young, his, his younger years, his younger life, he didn't really go out a lot. He didn't really kind of go out playing with his pals, all that kind of stuff. He wasn't really into that thing. He just wanted to play football. He loved playing football. He wanted to get better at playing football. So he did practice. He, he went out there and he'd done his thing. When he was going and he was playing with Man United, he wasn't going out and getting smashed every single weekend. He was, he was practicing. He was playing because he wanted to play. So he sacrificed the things that would, would have maybe felt really good in the moment for the things that he wanted as his long-term life. He wanted to be a phenomenal football player. So he put the work in and he practiced every day to get there. Now, one of the things he wasn't so good at, if you watch the thing, is that he speaks about his money. As soon as he got his paycheck, he would go away and spend it straight away. And I think that 
changed as he got older. I think now he's obviously kind of a bit more uh, savvy with his money, but he would get his paycheck and go away and spend it straight away. So he wasn't so great at delaying his gratification there. But when it came to actually improving at football, he was able to stop himself going out and getting smashed every weekend or going out and just hooping up with the lads and whatever to get better at what he wanted to get better at. So he put off the thing that he wanted right there in that moment for the thing that he wanted most in his life. And I think that's a massive thing that we all need to get better at, all right? Because, of course, doing something that feels really good in the moment feels really good, but is that really going to move you forward to that longer-term goal that you've got for yourself? And that's something I think we all need to ask ourselves. Um, okay, number three is everybody faces challenges. I think, I think it's really easy for us to look at celebrities, look at famous people and think to ourselves that, just because they're famous or just because they've got lots of money and just because they, they've got everything figured out, their lives look like it's on a, a, a traje traje blah, trajectory of success, all right? It's really easy for us to look at that and go, oh man, it's, you know, it's okay for them. Look how easy their life is. But if you watch this documentary, there was loads of different things that happened. I'll, I'll touch on a few. Like, you know, he, he, he got dropped, dropped from the team, put on the bench. Um, he had a bit of adversity. One of his teams went on a losing skid. There was different managers coming in. Uh, he had relationship issues, not with his relationship itself initially, but from like the, the his football managers didn't want him to be having the relationship because they wanted him to focus on football. Then he, then he was accused of having an affair. There was, there was loads of different things happened that caused a lot of problems and adversity in his life. But one of the biggest things, I'm going to touch on this point a couple of times because this was the thing that really kind of stood out to me the most. I would say this is probably the biggest thing for a couple of different reasons. Is after the World Cup in 1998, when England won the World Cup, I actually remember watching this World Cup. Um, and it was when David Beckham, I think, I can't remember if England were winning 1 0 or if they were drawing 1 1 at this point. I can't quite remember how this went. But David Beckham got, got tackled, he got taken down, and he was lying face down on the, on the grass. And he flicked his foot out and kicked the Argentinian player. And then he got sent off for that. Now, I remember as a Scotsman watching that at the time going, yeah, David Beckham doing it, because they got beat ultimately in that match. But I remember being ecstatic because as a Scotsman, we don't want England to win, right? But I was like, yay! I didn't understand everything that went on around the minute because, as I say, I wasn't a football fan as such. All right, so I didn't understand the ramifications and the things that were going to happen after that. And even after the fact that it all happened, I didn't really understand everything that came along with it. But when that happened... England then went on, they lost the match on penalties, but everybody blamed David Beckham for that. They all blamed him for that. And, you know, his manager blamed him. Not his teammates, not all his teammates did. A lot of his teammates actually got behind him. His manager blamed him. The country blamed him. Um, a lot of the commentators blamed him. Everybody just got right on top of him to the point he was getting death threats. And he was getting, you know, people were singing in the crowds about his wife taking up the bum. And th there was a lot of horrible stuff getting said about David Beckham around about that period. And, Again, from the outside looking in, when I was, you know, when I was, that was, I was 18 back then, so 18 years old, not fully aware, not, not a football fan, I didn't understand how much he actually went through. It went on for months and months and months with people booing him and shouting at him and calling him names and sending him death threats. But he still turned up and he showed up and he played to a really high level, to an exceptional level for Manchester United, even though all that was going on in the background. Like how many people could honestly say they would do that? Most people would break down, they would crumble, they would just run away and they would hide. Like, oh, and he wanted to do that. He says that he wanted to do that. He wanted to go away and hide because he was just like, oh, holy shit. But he kept on going, he kept on pushing forward. He faced the adversity head on and he kept on pushing forward. All right, so everybody faces challenges just because somebody's rich and famous and whatever else. Their challenges, they're, they're just different. Their challenges are di just different. <clears throat> and what, what is going to determine the outcome of our lives isn't, <clears throat> the level of the challenges we face, it's how we respond to the challenges. Like what can we do to, to, to head into that challenge and move past it? Because most people don't. Most people get faced with adversity and they go, ah, oh, and they'll cower away from it. Instead of kind of facing it head on and moving towards it and then working past it to make yourself stronger and make yourself better. All right, so that was a big one for me. And that, that whole theme of the hatred, the abuse, all of that, that's going to come back. And the, the management kind of uh, blaming them, that's all going to come back in a second and you'll see why. All right, so the management part is going to come in for number four. So number four is to take some responsibility. Now, the, when you watch what happened with, with, with right at the, at the back end of that, when the, the team were getting interviewed, the team got beat. All right, the team got beat. They got beat on penalties. But the management straight away blamed David Beckham. If he hadn't been sent off, we'd have won that game, blah, blah, blah. You, you, there's no way that they can possibly say that. There's no way they can say that for sure because you just don't know. All right, you've just got no idea whether they would, they would win that match or whether they wouldn't. That is, that is a completely 
um, nonsensical thing to say because you, it's not 100% guaranteed. He could have stayed in the park and they could have still got beat on penalties. You just don't know. All right. But to take, to take you, to take somebody and throw them under the bus like that and shirk your responsibility as a manager, you, if you're the manager, or the, you know, you, you're the leader, man. You're the leader of that team. If you're, you know, if you're a dad, if you're the, you're the leader of your family, if you're the manager in the company, you're the, you're the leader. If something happens, if something goes wrong, you have to accept responsibility. You have to take responsibility for that. Like if my, if my daughter was playing with matches in a red room and set her house on fire, if I was to turn around and say, man, that was her fault. I can't believe you just did that. I can't believe you just burned down our house. All right? Because she did burn down her house. She was playing with matches. She burned down the house. But is it her fault? No, it's not her fault. It's my fault because I'm her dad. I'm the leader of the family. I shouldn't be letting her play with matches in the bedroom. All right, so that's my fault. I have to take that responsibility. So David Beckham's manager at that time, his responsibility would have been to say, do you know what, man? Yeah, it was a silly thing that happened. However, on the day, we just weren't good enough. We didn't, we didn't, win the, we didn't do enough to win the match through the match. And then on penalties, you know, it, it, it could have gone either way. It's, it's a penalty shootout. It could, it's a 50-50 thing. It could have gone either way. We just don't know. Um, and it, it could have accepted that responsibility as a team, as a unit, and said, you know, on the day, we weren't good enough. That way then he's giving his support to his player for that moment of madness that happened. He's giving his support. He's shown himself up to be a really good leader and he's taking responsibility. Right? And that is something that we all have to do because we're so, so quick to just automatically say, it's his fault. It's her fault. No, 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 it's not my fault. It's because of X, Y, Z. And the minute we start passing off the responsibility, we're giving away our own personal power and we can't do that. Right? We have to start taking responsibility for our own actions. And even the things that happen, if, you know, if, we're the, if we're a leader in a certain situation, if we're in a, leader, uh, a leader's role, we have to accept that responsibility. That is our job. All right. Okay, so number five, and I'm going to say something from the Bible here, and I'm not a religious man, so uh, I might get it wrong. But let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Right Now, the reason I'm saying that, man, is when that happened with David Beckham, there was so much hatred. This is the point that really stood out for me. Like grown men, adults, and some women as well, but mostly men. It was mostly men that was shown in the documentary. They are, the, the venom in their faces and the abuse, they were thrown at the TV and they were thrown like, oh, it was unreal. Calling them names and throwing abuse at them and shouting like on the football pitch. You've seen them all and they were, they were giving them the fingers and they were shouting abuse. And then they were singing songs about, about his wife and saying things about his family. All because he made a mistake. All because he made a mistake. And then they, they hate him. They hated him. He'd been the prodigal son before that happened. He was the best thing ever. And then that one wee thing happened and they turned on him right away. Right, They completely turned. There was no loyalty and they turned on him and they were shouting all manner of abuse and all manner of absurdities just because he made a mistake. Right, And if, we, if you've never made a mistake in your life, then man, I, I, think, I think you're telling me a lie. Right, Because everybody makes mistakes. Everybody, everybody has done something in their life that it was like, oh, bugger, I shouldn't have done that, that shouldn't have happened, and it, that mistake has affected other people, and you've then got to go with your tail between your legs and say, oh, look, I'm really sorry, I shouldn't have done that, it's affected X, Y, Z, taking that responsibility and saying, look, I'm sorry, hands up, yeah, because David Beckham couldn't have panned that off to somebody else and say, oh, but it's not my fault I kicked him, of course it is, he had to take that responsibility, but he's then got to shoulder that responsibility for the rest of his days, and it still, he even says now, it still sits with him, it still sits with him, right, but people, grown men, grown adults, shouting abuse over a game of football that doesn't matter, man, all that much. It really doesn't matter. But getting getting so, I don't know if the word's passionate that I want to use because there's a difference between passionate and being completely mindlessly involved in something. But getting to that level where you're starting to hurl abuse that's affecting another man's life, that's just wrong, all right? So um, I think the big thing from that I want to take away is just like don't be a dick. Like Have a look and see what's really important in life and ask yourself, does that really matter? Like, does, does, it, does it help to improve your life or improve anybody else's life by you taking that stance? Or, or can you just say, ah, do you know what, man, it's happened. Let's just move it to the side and let's move on. Like, what can we do to move forward? All right, let's, let's see, like, what's the next step, right? What happens now? Okay, we didn't win the World Cup. Oh, well, does it really matter all that much? Probably not, all right? And look, man, that, like, we've all been there. We've all done that. But this watching that show really highlighted it to me just how much of a problem that is, <clears throat> all right? Okay, so um, that leads me straight into the next part. So number six is we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard, all right? Um, first and foremost, from that aspect, like hurling abuse at somebody for that, like that, that's, that's pretty low level, man. Um, but not, not only in that, like if, if you watch David Beckham through this whole show, man, he is like, 
he is super organized. He keeps himself neat and tidy. His, his house is spotless. Like he's got a beautiful house, an absolutely stunning house. But he goes around at the end of the night when everybody goes to their bed, he goes down and he cleans it all. He doesn't want to have clutter about, so he cleans the dishes away, he wipes down all the worktops, makes sure everything's put away because he doesn't want to have an untidy house. And then they cut to a scene when he was younger and the, the, the reporter's coming to his bedroom because I think he was getting signed for Man United or he'd signed by that point, I'm not sure. And they went in his bedroom and my God, it's tidy. Did you tidy it up for us coming? He's like, no, no, it's always like this. I don't like mess. And so because he wants things to be nice and tidy and organised, if you look in his cupboards, everything's organised. Like this is his shirts, they're colour coordinated. Like, I wouldn't go that far personally, but everything was organised. His shirts were here, his t-shirts were here. Everything was kind of where it was meant to be. All right, he plans his week in advance. So he's got all of his clothes set out for the whole week. So he doesn't have to think about well, what I'm going to wear today. He's got everything planned in advance. He's super organised because he wants to hold himself to a high standard. When he goes to an interview, he doesn't rock up all grotty. Like he goes, he's well presented. He's, he looks after himself takes care of himself, he, he eats a healthy diet, he, he still exercises regularly, he takes care of his body, right? he is active with his kids, he plays with his kids, he wants to be held to that higher standard. And I think that's something that we all need to do is we need to hold ourselves to that higher standard instead of just settling for the, 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 a life of average mediocrity all the time and just being like, ah, you know, good's good enough, that'll do. All right? Why does good have to be good enough? Can we not push for that little bit extra in our life and try and strive for something more? Because we're all capable of it. Um, okay, number seven. Number seven is priorities. All right, now I'm coming at this from a different, couple of different angles because again, if you watch the show, if you watch this show, man, there was a couple of points where he even says himself that he was quite selfish. All right, he's got he's got his family there, man. He says he, he loves his family. His family's his main thing for him. But as soon as an opportunity came up, football wise, it, it, it was all over it. All right, it was all over it. Um, when he was playing in America, uh, his team were getting humped left, right and centre. He wanted to get selected for England again. He was told that he would have to be playing for a top tier team in Europe if he wanted to get selected. Um, so without consult, uh, consulting anybody in his family, he just <laughs> he got a deal to go to Milan. Uh, and then he, he was like, oh yeah, Victoria was happy with that. But then Victoria was like, not got a clue. All right, so David's, uh, David Beckham's priorities at that point were his career, his football, which is fine. That's understandable. I get it. Um, but at the same time, obviously, you've got a family there, man. You need to take the, the, their uh, their wishes and their needs in, into into account instead of just being like, ah, yeah, me, 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 me. All right, so you've got to look and see what your priorities are in life. And again, sorry, but we want to sing away in the background if you can hear her. Um, <laughs> talking about family um so his family was obviously a big priority for him but his career was also a big priority and this goes back to what i spoke about earlier about great things taking sacrifice he didn't want to go out and get smashed every single weekend because his priority was being was being the best footballer he could be all right so you've got to get your priorities straight get your priorities at right in life and look at the things and ask you know the, the, is it actually serving you like is going out and getting wasted every weekend guzzling loads of beer and drinking eating kebabs and eating pizzas is that serving you in the best possible way is that in line with your priorities, the, the priorities you've got for your health, your your wealth, your finances, your family, the relationships out with your family? You know, are the things that you're doing, are they serving those things or are they just moving you further away from those things? Because if they're moving you further away, then is it really a priority in your life? Right, so we need to get our priorities straight. Um, number eight, which follows directly on from that, is communication is key, all right? So again, like it, when, he, when he just decided he was going to sign for Milan and then later on he decided he was going to sign for, for Paris Saint-Germain, he didn't consult Victoria at all. And she was just like, what is going on, man? She didn't, he, didn't, she didn't, he didn't talk to her at all. So communication, it's not that it had broken down, but you know, that could have caused some conflict. That could have caused some problems. Whereas if he had just sat there and said, look, this is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. And actually had that conversation. And look, I'll be the first to admit, man, this is something that I've not been brilliant at through my life. It's something I've had to really work at, whereas now with, with my wife, I'll sit there and say, look, I want to kind of do this thing here. Here's why I want to do it. This is, you know, this is why I think it'll be a good thing to do. And then we'll talk about it. If it's something that she's not fully on board with um, and it's not a thing that's massively important, it's not a priority for me, then, you know, it's maybe something I can put to the back burner. If it's something that I feel really is a priority for me, then I'll fight my corner and say, look, man, I really think this is something that I should be doing or blah, 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 and vice versa. But we've now got a much more open line of communication, which truth be told has served our relationship so much more right whereas before i would just do it i would just do what david beckham doesn't do it on my own we wouldn't, wouldn't consult at all and it, it caused problems right so communication is key we've got to always be communicating with those around us and this is even just not from his family perspective but from his his teammates perspective you, you know when he was in america there was a kind of a communication breakdown there was a, 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 a developed into a, a, a quite a hostile environment 
but he wasn't communicating properly. You've got to communicate. If he had been communicating the right way and explaining things and talking about why he wanted to do X, Y, Z or, you know, why he wasn't happy, it, it probably would have made that situation a whole load easier. But, you know, he, he chose not to do that because he was just thinking completely um, so minded, this is what I have to do without consulting anybody else. All right. Um, okay, number nine. In fact, before I go on to number nine, actually, I'm going to go with a, there's a cheeky, a, a cheeky extra one in here. So we're going to go with 11 tips. So number nine, we'll call this one number nine. This wasn't my original number nine. This is my new number nine. Number nine is look at who you're surrounding yourself with. All right, Com community is everything, man. We Obviously, when he played with Man United, right? When he played with Man United, they were a phenomenal team. There were some great players in that team. They performed at an exceptional level, but they were a team. They were an, they were an excellent team, all right? And that's what made them so strong is because they were a team. They maybe didn't have the, the absolute best players in the world in all their positions, but they were a solid team and their, their players were exceptional. They were really good. When he went to Real Madrid, he was surrounded by some of the best players in the world. Ronaldo, Figo, Zidane, Roberto Carlos. Like, all these amazing players are the Galacticos or the Galacticas. I've probably butchered that. But um, these really amazing players. And um, one of his first sessions, he actually talks about where he goes to run and do a sliding tackle on Ronaldo. Not Cristiano Ronaldo, the Brazilian Ronaldo. He goes to slide in and get the ball off him and he just kind of stops and pulls the ball back. And Deckham wasn't used to that. He was like, oh, shit. Like, this guy is, like, awesome. And he had to then, he had, again, he had a choice. He could shrink and be like, oh, these guys are so much better than me. And he speaks about that in his head, like, they're so much better. Am I going to be good enough? Or he could put in the work to get better. And that's what he did. He put the work in to get better. Because if you want, if you hang around with people that are of a higher standard or, a, or that hold themselves to a higher standard than you, then you've, you've got two choices. You can then distance yourself from those people and go back to lower, being a lower standard or you can level yourself up and get to that level, right? If you hang around, like, and I say this all the time, man, if you don't smoke and you hang around with six people that smoke all the time, chances are you're going to end up smoking, right? If you, if you want to get yourself fit and healthy but all your friends are eating pizza, drinking beer all the time, inhaling chocolate bars, not going to the gym, just sitting on their backsides watching telly and playing video games, you're, you're more than likely to get pulled back into that kind of environment. Right, but if you start going around with people that are doing the things that you want to do and being at the level you want to be at, you're much more likely to elevate yourself to get to that level. All right, so you need to kind of look at your environment and really control your environment because when your environment is of a, of a higher level of where you want to get to, it's going to help you to kind of push yourself to that level. Um, okay, so original number nine, but it's now number 10. You need to know when to walk away. <coughs> All right, so when David Beckham finished his career in Paris Saint-Germain, it, 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 it explains he wanted to play forever. He wanted to play forever because he loved the game. But he noticed he was getting sore. He was getting tired. He was finding it more difficult to get moving in the morning. He was getting older. And he knew at that point that instead of tarnishing his career, he just, you know, it was the right time. And you see this a lot with fighters. If you watch fighters that fight way past their prime, um, they, they do really well up to a point and then they maybe get clipped, get a, get a few knockouts, then all of a sudden their wins start to get less and less and less and then all of a sudden they're on losing skids, extreme losing skids and then it, it really tarnishes their legacy. He didn't want that to happen. So he knew when it had run its course, he knew when it was done and at that point there he, he wanted to walk away when he was on a high. And if you watch it when he finishes, man, he's getting standing ovations. The players are chucking him up. He's, he was, he's a legend, man. He's, he was, you know, he's one of the best players in the world. Um, uh, and he, he didn't need to drag that out any longer than he had to. All right. And I think this is something we can all learn because sometimes we, we hold on to things. I mean, if something's not working anymore or maybe it has worked for a long time and we just know, you know what, it's time. Like maybe you're working in a job that you've done everything you can do in that job. And the next level up is to go and challenge yourself and do something that's a wee bit harder or a completely different job a lot of people wouldn't do that because oh, the challenge is different oh, I don't like change but if you want to improve yourself if you want to grow then you need to move yourself to that next level and move yourself on so know when to walk away from something when it's no longer serving you and start moving on towards the other thing and that leads me on to the final lesson man is we can never ever ever settle all right you cannot settle if David Beckham had just walked away from from PSG and just sat in his backside got the PlayStation out and done hee-haw I don't think he'd have been happy, man, because he, he expresses in there that he, he feels he needs to be doing something. He needs to be doing something. That's why he was always looking for the next thing. You need to be looking for your next opportunity. All right. So and there's a big thing with this when people retire. If you see people retire, there's I don't know the statistics. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But a lot of the times when people retire, 
they gradually start to go downhill. They start to decline because they, they don't feel they've got any purpose. They've got nothing to do. They've got nothing going on. All right. So even even if you've hit the the absolute peak in a certain job, or you've you've you've, you've you know you've you've retired from your sporting endeavours, or like whatever it may be, don't settle. Because once you settle, you stop to grow. If you're not growing, you're dying, right? We've always got to be looking for that next little thing, right? Look for something that's going to challenge you, right? Because, you know, if, if, it's, if, if things don't challenge you, then they don't change you, right? So look for something that you can start to put your energy into. If you've, if you've maxed out on one thing, if you've, you know, you've known when to walk away, you've been like, ah, oh, that's enough of this. I've done that. I've done everything I can do here. Cool. What's next? Find the next thing. All right, so when you get to that next thing, you can then start putting your energy into that and continue to move forward. Right? And the more you challenge yourself, the more you grow, and the more you grow, the more fulfilled you're going to be in your life, as opposed to settling for mediocrity, sitting on your backside doing hee-haw, and then you end up just stagnating. You get comfortable and you get stuck in a rut, and then it's difficult to actually get yourself back out of that and continue to move your life forward. All right? So there you have it. There's my 10 lessons from the David Beckham documentary. Um, I would love to hear what, your thoughts are. So if you have watched this and one of these lessons has stood out for you, please let me know down in the comments. All right. If you've if you've not watched the documentary yet, I would also love it if you would go and watch that and then maybe come back to this video and let me know your biggest lessons. All right. Let me know what your biggest takeaways were from that. If you're a football fan, you might take a lot more away from it than I did. All right. I'm not a football fan, but I still thoroughly enjoyed that. And it's something I would probably watch again if it was available. Um, it was really, really nice to see how he came through his whole life going through the things he had to go through. I didn't realise he had to go through su such adversity to then come out to where he is now. And he's, you know, he, he's got a super successful life. He's now, you know, he's owning a, a football team in America and he's just signed Lionel Messi to come and play for them. And he's doing doing really, really well. So it's been awesome to watch that kind of progression as he goes through that life. And it, something I think that really highlighted for me was if he can do it, of course, there's, there's a bit of luck in there. There's different circumstances, different things going on. But if he can do it, then anybody can do something with their life. It doesn't, I'm not saying be playing for Man United, playing for England, I'm not saying that. But what is your thing? What are you going to put your energy in to start moving towards you know, your dream, the thing that's going to help you live that life that you want to live, all right? Because if one person can do it, then we can all do it, and that's for sure, all right? But let me know your biggest takeaway from this video, what lessons stood out to you the most. Go and watch the documentary, come back and let me know your biggest lesson from the documentary itself. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button and while you're at it, maybe give me a little subscribe so you can see when all of our videos come out as soon as they drop, all right? That is us for this one. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you on the next episode.